played two really good uh, mid-major teams. They tested us on both games. I think it's going to be great for us moving forward. You know, I'd like to see us, you know, pull away a little bit. We got up 21 on them, you know, early in the second half. And then I thought McNeese, I mean, you got to give them a ton of credit. When we got up 21, they, they didn't cave, they didn't quit. They kept fighting, and they ended up out-rebounding us on the offensive side. They had 12 old boards to our 10 in the first half. We were really on it. They kept us off the old boards in the second half, and they, they got them. I thought they played really hard. I think it's good for our guys to go against different types of playing styles. I thought the press, with the switching everything, you know, stagnated our offense. You know, we, we made one out of our last nine threes. You know, I, I thought in the second half, particularly the last probably what, 14 minutes of the game, they, they did a really good job taking us out of what we wanted to do. I thought we played way too slow. I thought, um, you know, and the ball ended up getting to the right place at times, but way too late in the clock. Like, it just – we played down in the last 10 seconds of the shot clock way more often than we'd like to do. So, but again, I, we knew they were going to be a good team. We knew they were going to be really athletic. They're, 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 those guys are going to beat a lot of good teams uh, this year. They're picked to win their league for a reason. And you got to give them a ton of credit. They made a lot of tough shots. I mean – you know, we chart the stuff. They they shot 11 of 22 on non-rim twos, and most of them were pretty contested. So, you know, they kind of defied the uh, percentages there a little bit, and you just got to give them a ton of credit for how hard they played and how they stayed in there. Yeah, Nate, how would you assess just the movement on offense you're seeing overall from your guys and how they're kind of carrying themselves on the floor? Uh, not good enough. This game wasn't – I didn't like it. I, I, I thought it took us – we didn't play with pop. We didn't push the ball up the floor enough. You know, we ended up with 68 possessions on offense. You know, our, if you look at, I think, I don't have the exact numbers in my uh, head right now, but the four previous games, if you count the two exhibitions, I think we were in the 80s on maybe three of them, maybe all four of them. So uh, I think Memphis was like high 80s. So, you know, to have like 20 less possessions, that's not not really how we're trying to play now. Now, good thing is Purdue's going to slow it down. I'd guess you know, knowing what their playing style's been for a long time up there. So, you know, we're going to have to win some games where the other team tries to slow it down. We're just going to have to uh, be a lot more efficient in the possessions we get. But I no, we they switched. We stood there. We stared at it. We held the ball too long. Like I, I didn't think we had very good ball movement tonight. We ended up with a decent assist rate. I think. 73% of our field goals, we had, we had 16 assists on 22 field goals. So it ended up being decent. And I think a lot of times we went to the free throw line was off what would have been an assist if, if we'd have made a field goal. So I thought as the possession wore on, we ended up, I didn't think we were selfish. I just didn't think we moved a ball enough. We just sat there and stared at the switch and didn't, didn't move it quick enough. Yeah, Coach, just defensively, what have they shown you on that side of the ball so far this year and just how much trust do you have in them in, in late-game situations whenever you need to stop? I mean, we I thought we did a fairly decent job for a majority of the game. I think we've got different options we can go to. I thought Cliff came alive there. You know, he had – I guess we just had him down – yeah, three blocks. Yeah, you know, he had – like when we put him back in there in the second half, I thought he did pretty well, you know, and then – they were kind of starting to get downhill against his trap, so we put Jaron and Grant at the four and five and switched. Uh, you know, we've got different options. I thought Reitzel was really good. You know, you look at plus minus. You know, Reitzel led the team with plus 17, and then Jaron, even though he didn't shoot it well particularly, he was a plus 16 when he was in the game. So, you know, if you look at our defensive leverage numbers, like Trelly was high. We were a lot better with him in the game. Mark's consistently had positive defensive leverage, which is great for Mark because, you know, that's a big point of emphasis with him this year, and I think he's been good at it. You know, Jaron, we are better with him in the game. Mo Diabate, you expect that. But Terion Reed, we were able to put him in late. So we've got, you know, some tough athletic wing forwards that we can put in and be pretty versatile. Or you can go with, like, a, a rim protector like Cliff depending on what the other team's got going and who they've got in. So 
defensively, we haven't been bad. I mean, this team is going to put up some numbers on some teams. They're going to get to the old boards and kill some teams. You know, you saw they got some guys that can make tough shots. So I, I didn't think defense was necessarily a problem. I did think uh, defensive glass in the second half was a little bit of an issue. But I, I thought offense was more our issue tonight. Coming out of these three games, just how do you feel about your team? And then also just what's the biggest, you know, takeaway or the thing that you learned from the, these first three games about your team? You know, our upside tie, like I think we all knew. I also learned that if we don't play with a competitive edge, we're, we're not all that special. Like we've got to have a competitive edge. The ball's got to move. we got to play the way we know how to play, and we're pretty good. But two mid-major teams that are very good for their level, like, you know, I haven't seen a mid-major poll. My guess would be these two would be in the top five, I would think. Like, I don't want to speak out of turn on that, but I think they're both highly talented, play hard, well coached. But we, we played two mid-major teams that, you know, Arkansas State were tied with seven to go, and McNeese cut the thing to six. They're late in the uh, second half. That So if we don't play the right way with a competitive edge and a fire and – like we chart the the blue collar every four minute, uh, we call them four minute wars. Like we lost the last four the, of the game, so we were up on them. We didn't lose one in the first six. We lost the last four. So after we got up twenty one with fourteen to go, that under sixteen to under twelve four minute deal, we lost the blue collar battle there. Then we lost it the next one. Then we lost the next one. And then we lost the last one. So I, I didn't think our effort was great once we got a, a twenty one point lead. And that, that's an issue. Like, we've got to be competitive no matter what the scoreboard is. And I think both games, we get up 16 on Arkansas State, let them cut it to three at the half. They end up tying it with seven to go. We get up 21 on this team, and they end up cutting it to six. We, we've got to do a better job playing hard and competitive with a lead. Nate, obviously, Grant, big first half from him, gets 22 points, another step up from what we saw from him just in the last game. How big has his improvement been and just having a guy like that coming back to, to carry a team in a frustrating game like this, how big is that for you guys? No, it's huge. I mean, you know, he he had some great games last year. You think of the North Carolina game. I mean, he had a huge uh, impact in that game. You know, th this was a game if he doesn't play as well as he did, we may not win the game. So it's great to have him. Uh, I think people forget he missed the entire summer because he uh, had, had an injury. Then he got another injury and missed both exhibition games and missed about a month of practice. So he's just now getting back into rhythm. I think he, he looks like he's back to close to 100% to me after that game. So it's good to get him back there. You know, I think a combination of him being aggressive on offense – shooting it well, you know, he hit those two threes, going to free throw line, converting at the free throw line, and then he led us with rebounds with eight. You know, he had 22 and eight. I thought his energy was great. So, you know, we're going to need that out of him uh, moving forward on a pretty consistent basis. You mentioned playing two tough mid-major teams with coaches obviously you're familiar with. What, what do you guys gain out of playing a team like McNeese? Yeah, I, I think you get exposed on some stuff that if you just played a bad mid to low major team that can't really test you, you think everything's fine. Well, I think we all know everything's not fine. Like, we had plenty of stuff we got to work on after tonight. So it's a little easier, you know, when you don't blow a team out. You know, we only beat this team by eight. To, to get you guys' attention and show them what you got to work on. Our, our defensive rebounding is a problem. Our turnovers are a major problem. We had 15 again tonight, so that's an issue. You know, attacking, switching defenses, I thought we'd do a lot better at it. We didn't. So we, we got to go through that. Letting the press slow us down, that was a problem. So, you know, they, they exposed us on multiple levels that we can now work on before – we get into league play. That, that's been my philosophy ever since I've got here. Schedule a really tough non-league schedule so that you can figure out all the issues you possibly can and be ready to play come SEC play. So I love the fact that McNeese and Arkansas State challenged us 
they're, they're both going to make us better. And now we got our first true road game up at Purdue, and they're obviously really good. I believe they're picked to win the Big Ten, and we, you know, we battled them pretty well up in Toronto last year. They they got a little bit different look as do we. So, um, uh, shoot, they've got one of the best uh, home environments in the country, from what I've heard. I've never been there, but you know, this is why we play these games. You know, this is why the guys work. This is why we like to do it. We like to play some of the best teams in the country, as evidenced by the next seven games here with who we're playing, and uh, I want to see where we stand against the best in the country, and this will be a good test for us on Friday. Hey, Coach. Uh, Latrell had some big threes tonight, kind of pulling himself out of a shooting slump that he was in to start the season and hitting that big one late, which pulled the team, ev team out of a slump. Can you kind of talk about, like, the impact you saw from him tonight and what his role is going forward? Yeah, I mean, this is what we expected him to be. I think he's another one that missed the exhibitions with an injury, so he's just now getting back into his rhythm. You know, the one for nine, I, I, that's not him last game. Some of those were good shots he just missed. Some of them, you know, you got to get a feel for what's a good shot, what's not. Some of that's hard to do if you're not practicing like he was out a month. So I thought he had a lot better feel. I thought he, honestly, I thought he turned down something I wish he would have taken. As well as he was shooting it tonight, there was three or four he should have shot, I thought. So, and, you know, if he'd have taken, three or four more and get 12 or 13 threes up, I, that'd be great because he, he's one of the best shooters in the country, in my opinion. So uh, we're going to, you know, last year at Mississippi State, we, we yanked him when he turned one down and he came in and hit one. Like, he turned some down. Holloway turned some down. I Like, I don't really care, you know, that Trelly was 5 of 9 and Holloway was over 5. They're both great shooters and they both can't turn down open shots. But it was great that Trelly hit those early got us going, we needed them. That helped build the lead up to 21 when we had it up. You know, part of part of the lead getting cut, we didn't execute on offense as well as we need to. Some of it, we just missed some shots too. So, you know, that that goes with it. It's that ebb and flow of basketball games is you miss some shots. But but to, to get outdone on the blue collar stuff, the effort stuff for the last four or four minute battles was a little bit of my issue. But you know, we, we just got to get some old boards when guys are missing. But but Charlie, shoot, Charlie played 31 minutes. He let us in plus minus. We were plus 17 when he was in. We needed him to play as well on both sides of the ball as he did tonight. And it's great to have him back. It looks like he's pretty, pretty well back, him and Grant both. All right, appreciate you guys.